NASA's new sulfur selenium solid state battery. Might have just rewritten the rule books, it's a big deal. And I know that sounds like a really big claim, but when you look at all of the, the data about it, and when you look at what they're actually saying, and uh, it really does sound very impressive. Let's jump into it. Hello folks, my name is Ben Alexander. Thank you so much to all of the channel members, and I think the channel just crossed over 23,000 subscribers uh, recently. It's pretty much doubled in a few months now, so I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Now, most of us think of NASA as being uh, people who just launch rockets uh, into space, basically, or landers. And, uh, but what is often missed is that they also run one of the most advanced materials and energy research programs in the world. I've mentioned them once or twice before on the channel over the last year or two. They've been quietly working on a battery with uh, some very specific tech inside it for years. And some of their results from recently have been genuinely impressive, especially stuff tied to aviation. According to Clean Technica, the aeronautics part of NASA's mission involves more than just uh, engines or wings and about reducing emissions in flight by finding alternatives to conventional jet fuel. And of course, as anyone in the EV space knows, electric propulsion is far more efficient, cleaner, safer, cheaper to run than combustion, basically. The issue has always been uh, the same. Batteries are very, very heavy, bulky, and until now have not always been very energy dense, or not enough for uh, large commercial aircraft anyway. So that's where this new battery tech comes in. NASA's prototype of the, these new batteries called Sabres, short for Solid State Architecture Batteries for Enhanced Rechargeability and Safety, uses a sulfur selenium chemistry. You've potentially heard about this before, not too many people talking about it, which is mind-bending to me because it's incredibly useful. And it is said to hit 500 watt-hours per kilogram, which is just incredible. And uh, roughly double the energy density of today's average lithium-ion battery cells. It's that good. So if that number holds, if that is true, if that's what comes out in the next year or two, then we're suddenly in a world where fully electronic commercial aircraft aren't just possible. They are incredibly practical. Another issue has always been power delivery. Airplanes need, or as Americans call them, airplanes. Airplanes need enormous bursts of power during takeoff. Until recently, solid state batteries could not discharge fast enough compared with lithium ion. NASA says that they have solved that issue, increasing discharge rates tenfold uh, early on as well, and then improving it another fivefold after that. In other words, the new version can deliver far more instantaneous power than any earlier solid state design. So I don't have the exact data on that, all the specific numbers about it, but we can clearly see that it's going to be pretty intense. On top of that, these batteries are now 40% lighter than previous versions, thank you to clever packaging, and uh, the sulfur selenium cells can be stacked directly on top of each other with no heavy casing, cutting dead weight dramatically. And that's a very big deal for aircraft, because uh, with aeroplanes, almost no part of the plane structure is flat. So this modular stacking means that packs can be shaped to fit uh, various curved sections of the plane's fuselage, instead of just sitting in a box, which is kind of what we're used to these days at the minute. So the benefits are clear. Double the energy density, far higher power output, 40% lower mass and safer solid state uh, construction with no flammable liquid electrolyte. Obviously, this is the, the main concern for, for people in the EV world these days. Of course, there is also a catch and it's cost, basically. Uh, solid state batteries remain expensive to manufacture. They can produce them, it's just expensive uh, to, to, to produce them, basically. And NASA's design is still in the prototype phase, so we're not about to see a Boeing 787 or Dreamliner or something like that, powered by these 
in the next year or two, I don't think. But if the technology does scale, it could completely transform how we think about electric flight. NASA's leadership has been very, very bullish about this one. They've genuinely uh, been saying publicly, publicly avowing for the last couple of years, they believe this cell architecture could become the benchmark for future aircraft batteries and maybe even for high power terrestrial applications too. That is a really big thing to say. That is uh, something that took me, you know, threw me aback, basically. So just imagine pairing something like this with the latest lightweight electric motors. We already have 28 kilogram motors capable of nearly a thousand horsepower each. They're not very big, not very heavy at all. Four of those would, on a passenger aircraft anyway, would actually exceed the total output of most current little uh, planes, basically, and the power would be instant, in incredibly brilliant. So this is more than just a lab curiosity. If they can commercialize it, we're looking at lighter, safer aircraft that run on clean energy and could take off silently without burning a drop of fuel. That's incredible, with very, very many cycles in the battery chemistry. So they could be, you know, be, they could be in use for many years. What do you reckon? This is a really big, big topic. I understand that. We can unpack it a little bit in the comments below. Would you feel confident stepping onto a plane powered by NASA's solid state batteries? Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. What do you think the issues are? What do you think the mainstream public would think outside of the EV world? And uh, also a thank you to uh, Gil and also Murray in the comments. I'm always seeing your comments, really, really good comments. And I just want to say thank you very much for that. I really do. I enjoy, I enjoy reading all of the comments, but I just notice your names more so than others. And you're always putting really interesting comments. Thank you very much. So everybody, we can give him a pat on the back. That's really good. So thank you very much. Also, these are the channel members, just before I forget. I should not forget this because this is really, really important to me. So these are the people that support and they chuck a couple of dollars a month or they are members on uh, Patreon, YouTube or buy me a coffee because you can buy me a coffee, which is a really nice thing to do that. So 